All right, y'all, I just came up here. We're still in Amarillo, Texas. Hit the lake, but I came up here to use the bathroom. And then I saw they have shower in here, sink. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna come shower over here later. Especially after we cook that fish and I have my hands all in mustard and, you know. Crazy wind equals crazy hair. And the sun's going down now. <sighs> Just beautiful days, man. Just beautiful days. Well, I guess we're gonna go pull over to our spot and kind of hang out. I'm gonna pick a new spot for the night, which is just down the way, literally. Fresh out the shower. I didn't put coconut oil over my beard, so I feel nice and hydrated. Not dried out. Whew. I'm growing my rape stash out. So uh, it's kind of getting to the point where it's starting to bother me in my mouth. But I'm just trying to go through the process and get get through the annoying part. I mean, this is majestic. I'm just kind of hanging out in like a village, low key, you know? I'm looking for, usually when I park in pretty places like this, I either want a level ground or I want something that's at a slight decline because of the way I lay. You know, my pillow's back there, it's a mess right now, but I'd rather lay with like at this slant with my head up or flat. I don't I don't want to lay this way. Let's see here. I think there's our spot right over her. Here's home for the night. And this is how we do it, baby. Immediate transition to beautiful outside terrain. Just like that. I don't got socks on. So I feel free right now. Hair's blowing in the wind, all crazy. Man. Yes, Sersky. Yes, Sersky. Man, life is good, huh? So whatever you make it, I guess. I'm about to work on some editing real quick. Man, I look crazy, huh? I gotta get my middle part down properly. Haven't mastered it yet. But anyway, I'm gonna get some editing done. Try to uh, put out a video tonight. I'm literally over here working on a short right now, which is like my Black History meal. And they're bringing in the, it looks like those water bags. They deploy, like they pick up water and go use it to distinguish the fire. And you can see the smoke all of it, all on the horizon. Anyway, this little cargo bob just crossed right above me. So it looks like that fire spreading. But I know we're right on the perimeter or we're right on the outside of where it was yesterday. And there's smoke behind us. I've never seen anything like this before. But like I said, this is Texas's uh, biggest fire in history. Well, in Texas history. Got like a little beam stream, whatever that's for. But now, yeah, you can see the fire smoke all on the coast. I mean, all on the horizon. See, this is where we're at, and we're literally right on the outside of it. But this is the Windy Deuce. This is the large fire cover in the bottom half of Lake Meredith. Um, we've got the Smokehouse Creek Fire and the Grapevine Creek Fire. And I believe that's the only three going on. I say only three, like it's not a lot, but it's literally covering the entire, like, whew, one big, like, horizontal swoop of the top of Texas. I'm 
you. They're back to back to back. I wonder how many gallons that thing holds because honestly, it doesn't seem like um, it would do a lot of work. Like, I wonder how that's actually effective in stopping the fire that's spreading rapidly. Well, for everybody wondering, it just came through announcing that it is a National Park emergency closure. So, uh, let's skedaddle. Good thing I already showered and we're packed and ready to go. Not sure where we're going to head to, but guess we'll find out. Everybody's pretty much getting up out of here. I feel like we're on storm chasers. because what direction we head does matter. Let's get one last shot of this. Lake Meredith, peace! Beautiful. Cinematic smoky background. Wow. Did say they were expecting more outbursts today. But here it is, off in the distance. We're in the midst of history, guys. Texas's largest national wildfire. Now, I might sound a little more optimistic and excited about it than most people, uh, but I'm kind of indifferent. I just haven't seen something like this before. Now, honestly, we could head back down to Amarillo uh, because I was gonna head over there tomorrow anyway, and it looks like that's what I'll end up doing regardless. Let me see, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not uh, going the wrong way over here. I was just seeing which way we're supposed to go to get out of here. Oh, well, it seemed like this is the wrong I, way. <laughs> no, 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 you're going the right way. About the only way to go right now okay. is going to be going up the high plains where those that vehicle with the lights is. All right. And then you're going to have to take a right, and they'll probably direct you that way. Okay. Where are you headed ultimately? Yes, Amarillo, I don't know. Yeah, so take high plains, and that you'll be able to kind of make your way back to Fritch in 136 and then get to Amarillo from there. Be safe. Thank you, my man. Yep. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. And he said the high plains. I don't even know what that is. All right. I guess uh, from here, I'll just put Amarillo in the map. We'll head back down there and kind of get out of this fire zone. And I finished some editing up tonight, so it uh, looks like we're out of the problematic area. Just a little hazy. But uh, I guess I'll see y'all over there. All right, guys. So we're officially about to leave Amarillo, and I'm heading to Oklahoma City area, the surrounding area. Now, real quick before we leave, I want to let y'all know we got a couple upgrades lately. I've got this new overhead cargo net, which holds a lot of stuff. And having this cooler down here, uh, it kind of took up my round chair storage. So this makes up for it and some. Like, it really holds a lot of stuff. Also, I've got like a little, um, what you call it, laptop stand in here. And that's awesome, too. Shout out to Miss Christina for that. And that's not it. I've got some GoPro mounts. So I got some for the dash to help with the angles. I got more to put on the exterior of the truck and we just got some to use as we please. And I've got a new three burner propane situation. Like a little, you know, three burner piece. I don't even know how to break it down, but we got that now. I will show you all that. It's in the back right now, but shout out to Miss Christina. Thank you so much. She hooked me up with that, really helped me out. And uh, I'm trying to make sure I don't leave out anything. If I do, I'll just make sure I add it later. I have been getting a lot of backlash. I say a lot. It's been like a 50-50, I feel like. Maybe 60-40 maybe on the good side. I've been getting some backlash from the Black History Month video. So, I hit my grandma up. <laughs> so, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see what she thinks right now. So, just a little something about me. Uh, I came up in a predominantly black family. My immediate family was mixed. I had a black stepdad. My biological father's white, of course. My mom also. And I've got a good relationship with my biological father. Uh, but I was just raised in a black household, black family. So just to give y'all a little background. So I got a grandma, her name's Felicia. Grandma Felicia, just to let y'all know. Gold tooth, I mean, <laughs> she fits the script for a black grandma, I'll say that. 
So I hit her up because I already told her, like, you know, I, I gave her my ideas or, you know, I just talked to her about videos I'm doing. I'm like, yeah, you know, this was a few, like, a few weeks ago. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do a Black History Month meal, probably like a stereotype dish or something. Just to kind of tribute it. You know, just to kind of make it interesting and involve it in what I got going on in my life. And I cook. <clears throat> so I hit her up. I'm like, Grandma, why is everybody hating on me? Anyway, I feel like there's positive and negative stereotypes, uh, annotations, connotations, however you want to put it. And... I personally am not a derogative or a derogatory kind of person. I don't use profanity online because, you know, I like to respect people that uh, might not share the same beliefs. I don't think profanity matters. If it's the context of how you're using whatever you're, it's the context of what you're saying. It's always the context. Um, so I am, I am a little confused by some people getting negative out of the, I guess the Black History Mill video. But you know, I mean, I still, I still respect everybody's opinions, and I understand that uh, we all have different perspectives. At the end of the day, everybody that's worried about me getting canceled or like worried about any kind of backlash from the video, I mean, you don't have to worry for me because I'm not worried for me. I know the intentions I put the video out with, and you know, if the content really did bother you that much, uh, then you know, maybe this channel's not for you. And I'm just kind of being real, keeping it real with you because I mean, you know, the goal of what I got going on is to kind of embrace every embrace people embrace people people's cultures you know because cultural differences are what separates us the most so and if we can all learn to bring each other together in that way instead of look for a way to divide ourselves i feel like we would be a lot better as a society and as common people and you know it's just it's not acting like you don't notice a person's culture or notice a person's color is acknowledging it accepting it and not judging people for it but like i said i'm a white person i come from a black family so naturally i'm kind of I'm in between everywhere. I'm not really fully accepted in a white community. I'm not fully accepted in a black community. Really, I'm not accepted anywhere. You know what I'm mean? Like I'm a weird offset. So, and that's why I have this appreciation for everybody coming together despite differences because I always kind of feel like the odd man out. The goal here is to do without that. Like just take away the dividends. We're all in one pot, one pot together, one big gumbo. But that's all I really had to say about it. I did want to address it because I see some of the comments and uh, you know, some of the stuff is, you know, make me feel some kind of way. I can't say it doesn't bother me, but I just want to address some things and just go ahead and kind of be upfront with everybody and let y'all know where I'm at with it. Apart from that, though, guys, I'm just riding, cruising. Like I said, I just donated plasma. It's Thursday. We're rolling up out of Texas, heading to Oklahoma. I'm going to do, well, right now, my current plan is I'll do OKC area for a week. I'll do Tulsa area for a week. But, you know, everything's always subject to change, so who knows? All right, y'all, we just made it to Cracker Barrel in OKC, one of them at least. This one is on the southwest end. But if y'all know anything about me by now, that driving puts me to sleep. So I'm about to crawl back here. It was raining all the way here. So hopefully we get some rain over here where we're at because it's just so cozy in here with the rain. And then I got this new headspace, which kind of makes me feel even more like crowded, but in a good way. So it kind of just rocks me to sleep. Buenos dias, muchachos. And girls, uh, we just woke up today, Cracker Barrel, and pleased to inform you that we were able to get some rain last night, and it was actually pretty heavy uh, thunderstorm, so I slept so good up in here, but this is the big news for the day. Check this out. We are officially monetized. Wow! All right, so this is a, a huge deal for me. And I know I'm looking very underexcited, but trust me, uh, I'm like, I'm ecstatic. So we're officially monetizing all the videos. I woke up this morning, had all the watch hours and uh, the YouTube partner program, everything kind of went through. So now y'all had the pleasure of enjoying ads while, during the videos. But anyway, guys, we're officially monetized. If you've been here, if you've been rocking since the beginning, Thank you so much because really I could not have done this with like without any of you. Shout out to my boy Mateo, winter is blue. Bro, you really helped me out. I'm not gonna lie, that made a uh, big impact on my channel and I really can't say thank you enough. Everybody that came from Mateo, winter is blue. Thank you, welcome to the family. I hope y'all keep enjoying the content and you know, it's just more to come. So moving forward from today, I'm not exactly sure what I'm about to do, but I'm about to get up, go brush my teeth, I might go shower because I'm feeling like I uh, could use one. I really haven't done anything here. I just really chilled out the whole time. I went to a lake. I, really nothing at all. So I didn't really record much. 
But uh, now that we're heading to Tulsa or the Tulsa Way, I found a camping spot along the way, and then I found another spot kind of north of Tulsa. So we'll hit that one for a couple of days. And then by the time we're done hitting both of them, it'll be time to end up in Tulsa. Donate plasma. That'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll be there. Thursday, we'll roll out to Fayetteville. We're gassed up, ready to go. And I'm about to wrap my hair up. Let's see. Purple for the day, man. Gotta love this light purple. And voila. Hey, how you doing? I was uh, uh, calling to see what we need to do to get into the, uh, I guess the, the little area. Yeah. To get into the resort? Oh, it's a resort? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that. Mind by it. I didn't know that it was going to be any kind of like weird entrance. So, I found another spot we're going to go check out and hopefully this one works out. If it doesn't, I might just catch like a Walmart tonight and we'll go find it tomorrow and that's just because personally uh i want to cook something because i'm hungry and i don't want to be on the road like at night when i'm going to unfamiliar areas if i can help it sometimes i end up doing that but i try to get there before the sun goes down so i can go ahead and kind of get set up and get comfortable but let's go see if this one works out and if it don't like i said we're here to walmart so i'll see y'all over there all right y'all so i keep trying to go i try to go to two different spots and i try to navigate Anyway, long story short, the navigation was just not working out. So, we're kind of canceling on the original first spot. I'm about to be at this Cracker Barrel in Tulsa. So All right, good morning, sexy people. I just woke up, so this is a raw and uncut of morning funk. But, uh, it feels really good over here, and it looks like it's about to rain. But, when I was in Oklahoma City, it was actually kind of humid. So, I'm like, dang, bro, I ain't feel hot in a minute. So, now, like, it feels great. I love, like... It's like the perfect temperature for my big body. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go try the other spot because I really don't want to be in the city. The goal was not to be in the city. So I'm about to hop up um, and we're going to go up to like northern side of Tulsa and we'll go camp out over there and get out of the city just because I've been in the city for a week and I like to camp. <laughs> Now this is supposed to be a a free spot also. This is a neat little spot. Alright, I think this spot right here is pretty cool. Let's check it out. good out here way less windy than it was in Amarillo last time I was by the water all right but I'm hungry so let's go ahead and get this grill fired up this ain't gonna take long while I haven't been recording I've been getting good at uh firing this grill up and eating pretty quick all right it's a little dusty back here dang says wind we fired up baby and see right there get rid of that charcoal all right while we over there burning on the grill we'll come in here to the old fridge 
I got so much stuff in here. Uh, just put the chicken thighs. That's the latest item. I mean, look how much I've got. We're about to get out our patties. Uh, might as well get the mayo, ketchup, moist it out. Let's see, tomato. Yeah, lettuce. Come on. I mean, how much stuff can you fit in this thing, man? Two pieces of cheese. I'm running low on bread, so instead of doing two burgers, I'm gonna do a double cheese. Get my jalapenos out. What else we got in here? Oh, need my need my pickles. My mustard. Yeah, no, I mean that's a lot of stuff. I think it kind of, and I still had the partition inside of here, taking up about a, about two inches worth of space. Um, let's see here. What we need to put back. All right, put the chicken back in. All right, good for now. Now we got all these. See mustard, ketchup, mayo, patty, tomato, or tomato. Okay, cool. Got everything. I'm about to grab all this and bring it to the back, and then I see all over there. Oh, also, that's where I hit my bread stash. I fed two buns to some geese. Well, they had some Canadian geese that I, when I was at one of the lakes, and I just couldn't help but feed them some bread. So I gave them two buns. That's why we're two buns short. But it was definitely worth it. But these right here, I don't even know what this is for real. This artesian baked bun type whatever. Man, these things go so hard. Please try them if you haven't. Ooh, look at that flame bar. Yeah, we fired up today. <sighs> hey, and by the way, for anybody curious, uh, grilling is so much easier than cooking on a Coleman stove, man. Because you don't have to clean anything up. You just burn the pit, and then I use like a one plate, and I got my spatula, the spatula I use to cook with, and I literally just wipe down the spatula. I don't even clean it all the way for real, because I'm just gonna continue to use it. But I just wipe it down with a wipe, and then I dump the coals out when I'm done, and I'm pretty good at guesstimating them now, so they pretty much all the way burnt out by the time I'm done. It's a little windy over here, so I hope it's not interfering with the audio too bad. But man, I love this grill. This this little 10 incher, this that 10 incher that uh put in overtime when I was with my Venezuelan family that I met at Walmart. And this thing here has it's definitely perfect for like a single person use. The only thing I wish it had was a lid, but it's cool because this works out for now. And this thing was like eight dollars fifty cents at Walmart, so no biggie. I'm gonna go ahead and set these patties on here. Now I'm gonna show y'all what I see in my meat with right now, but it's about to come to a change here soon, here shortly. So I'm trying to wrap up with what I got before I move on to my new seasoning. Look at that. All right, I'm telling you. Out here in the middle of nowhere, and this stuff just gets so much harder. Put my slappy mama, because I'm trying to finish this off. And by the end of the month, I should be done with it. But. Put that seasoning on there, let that bottom side cook a little bit, flip it, re-season. I'm telling you, man. I love, I personally love uh, grilled food. Like, it just just something about it it's just something about it especially out here having food over the fire just tastes so good man now it's a little windy right here so i'm about to pull out my little wind block shout out to miss christina for hooking us up and we're gonna see if this kind of helps us out this does not take long and i love that Jalapenos cooked down. 
But don't worry, ain't nothing safe. Everybody kitchen smoke today. About to throw these buns on there. Get them toasted up. That's how we go tuck that lettuce in. Better lettuce, tomato blanket. Come on. All right, grill time is a wrap. Let's go ahead and get this bed made. A little bit of mayo. A little ketchup. Come on. Right there, little comforter. That's a fitted sheet. That one up, just like that. Tuck that in. A couple pillows. Get that big body pillow right here. Alright y'all, I'm fighting the wind, so I don't know how good y'all is. We have, I'm gonna double cheese burger right here. Let me just drill, it probably took 30 minutes from the time I fired it up to the time we about to take a bite. Look at that, how long. I gotta turn this thing right side up for y'all to kind of really get in there and get the perspective. Oh, she about to, she's getting slippery. <laughs> we gotta do something, gotta do some damage control. can't beat this right here eating a sloppy burger out here somewhere in Oklahoma oh I love camping I can't stand this chilling in the city all right now I said I was gonna do a Q&A video and I was debating if I was gonna do it separately like an entire video dedicated to Q&A but I think I'm gonna include it into just kind of chilling here wipes over Just like that, our dishes are washed, and we can go store our groceries back in our fridge, and that is it. Alright, what's up, y'all? I'm here. I'm about to do our q and I keep fighting with this wind, and I just want to let y'all know anybody who's made it here. I have a lot of people ask me to do an Amazon wish list, and I officially did one, and I officially put one up. If you don't know where to find it, I put it in my link tree. It's like my Amazon gift, so... You can kind of filter through and see what is important and what's not. I tried to find some stuff just because people were um, wanting me to make a list. And I was like, man, I really don't need anything. Like, I don't know what to get. So I, I actually took some time out and thought about some stuff that I would think would be cool in the truck. And some stuff that would be very beneficial and useful. With that being said, I really brought that up because I have a, a tripod in there. And I keep dropping my GoPro. I, I swear that was the wind. I swear that was the wind that was not scripted. If that's a sign, I think it is. <laughs> Somebody help a play out and give me a tripod. You know what I'm saying? This one is from uh, Smarties or Cool. Big Nugget, are you aware that you're a sex symbol? <laughs> Black and white. Right here on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, I can't make this stuff up. You know, I, can't, I can't make it up. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. I remember going in the comments and replying saying I'm going to get this one. Did you use lake water to boil your prawns? Okay, look, I'm going to be honest. I did use the lake water. I didn't actually treat it off camera. They said, okay, I, I was informed that the water was treated. So that's what I went off of. I didn't realize how big of a deal it was going to be until after the fact. So for anybody that's curious, yes, I used the lake water. No, I didn't personally treat it. And no, I didn't get sick from it. I ended up getting sick after that. But that's because I got the flu from my dad in Mississippi. It's just coincidence. 
Okay, don't grill me too hard. But yes, I did use it. And I will say I learned a lot about water cleanliness after, after doing all that. Let's see. Uh, I've seen some truck camper toppers. This is from, oh, by the way, previous question, Terra Tiara Bell. All right, this is from A Job. 1652 hey big nugget i'm glad i found your channel i've seen some truck camper toppers do you think that you'll go that route for a little more room slash comfort in the future now i see a lot of y'all like this so just to answer this question i do think i'm gonna build my own truck camper topper on the back <clears throat> so if everybody's curious what's to know man are you gonna put a topper on it man don't you need more space uh i will be working on my own blueprint i'm gonna custom build my own i would like to at least that's the plan now of course everything's subject to change so you never really know what sticks and what does it however i do plan on building my entire own back extended camper and i will say for everybody that is concerned about the space i have now i have plenty of space in there one for me two it's so easy for me to be incognito because my truck is so easy to blend in like it's just so easy to blend in. I mean, mine is all the drawing on it, but that's just questionable. People don't think somebody's living in there because of that. But I could literally boondock anywhere. I could park anywhere. You really get some pros with having a truck with no like obvious sign that you're living in it. Moving to the next one, uh, Sandra Jackson. Where do you plan to travel to? Thank you for sharing your journey with us. It was my pleasure. And where do I plan on traveling? I do plan on hitting every state in the continental and non-continental US that includes Hawaii and Alaska. Um, it'll probably be a while before I'm able to completely achieve that. I imagine it's gonna take over two years for me to hit every state in America, <clears throat> but I'm gonna hit them all. And where at specifically in each state, I'm, honestly, I do not know. I'm just kind of letting the road take me where it leads me. And I'm just kind of here for the ride. What are your plans for summer? I heard, I hear Arkansas got them hot girls. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what, <laughs> Arkansas does have some attractive women, I will say that. I actually didn't notice that recently. I noticed that when I was passing through Arkansas one time, I was heading to Ohio to pick up a puppy, and then I just made a couple stops on the way there to get gas and stuff. I'm like, man, I ain't lying, Arkansas got some, some uh, yeah, they got some quality out there. But for summer, I'll probably end up, I don't know, honestly, it's kind of hard to, to determine. Right now, by the end of March, I have a goal of where I'm trying to end up. And after that, personally, I would love to end up in the PNW and spend pretty much the summer up there, Oregon, Washington, Montana, all that area. I'm, I'm fine with dedicating my entire summer just to the Northwest region. And if I could do that, I will. But like I said, I just kind of follow the road. It leads me. Uh, can you give us a little more backstory on why you decided to live the nomad lifestyle? What do you hope to gain from your experiences? That's from SoulShine3288. <clears throat> okay, so just to kind of put such a descriptive answer into a summarized little thing here, I'm going to say I wanted to do nomad life. Okay, one, I was like 10 years old, and I remember I was at my dad's house at the time, <coughs> and I saw like this commercial or TV show or something. He was This man was a millionaire and he lived in the back of a, a yellow van and they were showing it. And I'm like, man, that's such an awesome way to live. So that kind of got the, you know, it got the, it planted the idea of van life in my brain at the time. And honestly, kind of moving forward, I just love a free lifestyle. I mean, I like to travel anyway, even when I wasn't doing the Nomad. Like I moved to Houston for a number of reasons. One, I moved to Houston because uh, for bike life. Two, because I, I came from Lafayette, Louisiana, and I was like, I didn't want to go somewhere too far. And Houston kind of had, it was like a, a good headquarters to go hit Dallas. You can go hit San Antonio. You can go hit Austin. And you can live in Houston and still just have a lot going on. Plus, they had Galveston, which isn't like the best beach, but it's still a very cool beach. It's cool to have a beach. You get the best, the best of both worlds. You can get Houston City, Galveston Beach. Uh, so anyway, <coughs> that's a little digressive. Uh, but to more on the topic as to why I wanted to live the nomad lifestyle, it's freeing. You know, I mean, I feel like, honestly, I really feel like a lot of this mental health problem situation I got going on is from an overwhelming amount of stress in my life from multiple different factors. Uh, between, like, bad decisions I was making, between just being overwhelmed with, I guess, I don't know, your American dream. I was never a fan of 9 to 5 for the rest of my life. That never sat right with me however i know that's not in depth enough so i will dive a little deeper for now and 
I'll say that I do have a six-year-old son. His name's Jackson. So he'll be seven this upcoming December. Birthday's in September, the day before Christmas. And you know, I was not I'm not able to be the parent I want to be. And you know, it's cool. I could, you know, if I was continuing to work like I was doing before, you know, I could financially cover my responsibilities, you know, pay the child support or whatever. But I was just so miserable doing the work I was doing and not and feeling like I'm not doing a job, doing the proper job as a parent. Because at the end of the day, you know, money doesn't or that's not what's gonna count in the end. So I was like, you know, I'm miserable doing this. I think that had a big part to do also. So I was like, man, at least um, if I get out here, I'm gonna be leaving my career behind, but I'm not happy at it, you know? But let me go do try van life. And if I just gotta rebuild up again to get myself to a, I don't know, anywhere on a similar financial realm, it'll just have to be one more time. I'm doing something I love, I'm doing something I enjoy. So it's like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I could kind of go forever, but I don't want to spend just too much time on that one because I could, we could have a conversation about that. Meet me on the road, we'll talk. <laughs> Let's see, do you have a favorite food that you like to cook when you're at a park with an outdoor grill? Favorite meat seasoning? All right, y'all ask me about my favorite meat seasoning at the wrong time, because I'm about to swap. Please keep up with me, because I'm about to swap. I will be swapped over by the end of this month to an official, se an official seasoning that I'll be rocking with for a while, at least. However, I've used Slappy Mama for a long time. I've used Tony Sacheries too. Slappy Mama has less salt, so I like to stick with that one. Uh, favorite food that I like to cook in an outdoor grill? Honestly, I'm kind of new to the grilling. <clears throat> I'm not like a big griller, so that's somewhere I like to expand. But so far, these burgers been going hard. I'll probably do like a little carne asada or something just because the carne asadas go hard too. But I'm not really sure. But food to cook, period, I like to smother meat. If I get a burner and a black pot, I would love to cook for like uh, groups of people on the road. Like if I meet up with other van lifers or if I just like gather the homeless together or something, I pull out the black pot and we'll smother some, I don't know, some pork chops, smother some oxtails, some seven steaks, some whatever, whatever kind of meat. It don't matter what kind of meat. What's your favorite song slash anthem right now? Let's see, I got one in my saved YouTube videos right now just for y'all. Um, I actually just heard this song. It's a cover of Mom Playing Tricks on Me, but it's by this band called Nether Hour. And if I had to pick a song that I feel like covered who I feel like I would be as a song, this would be the song. So it's called, let's see her. Well, I mean, it's Nether Hour, Mom Playing Tricks on Me, uh, like a rendition of the Ghetto Boys. I'm actually probably going to include that link if I can, or somehow I'll put it on the screen because y'all should definitely go check it out. It hits so hard. I'm not lying. Like that song, I touch your soul. All right. Uh, if you keep living the nomad life, do you think you'll get a camper or a van, something bigger eventually? And I'm loving your channel. I find you on Mateo's channel. That's from Miss Teresa. Thank you, girl. And to answer that question, okay, so I'm gonna tell y'all my two favorite vans right now, just so we get that out the way. If I had to go old school, I want like a G20. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure on the year, but I call it the serial killer van. They got three kind of vans to me. You got the serial killer van, you got the rapist van, and you got the church van. Now the church vans are like the new Ford Transit uh, Ram Pro Masters, the stuff you think you see some church passengers on as they just casually going on an excursion. Then you got the the rape van, and I'm sorry if that bothers you. Just I'm just kidding. But the rape van is like a Ford Ecoline ice cream truck. When you th just think ice cream truck, that's the rape van. And then you got the serial killer van, which is my personal favorite. Not because I'm a serial killer, but because I just love the style. Uh, and that is probably like the 80s, 90s model G20s. I think it's because my grandma has one in the back of her house and for some reason I just always loved it. Not 100% sure. But will I upgrade? It's hard to say. So it is hard to say. You know, van life is one day at a time. I wouldn't mind, you know, but at the same time, if I do build on the back of my truck, I'm excited to see how that comes out. And it, the way I do it, it'll probably be a unique, a unique setup. So I'll probably go more for originality, I feel like in the end. Uh, but if I do get a van, it would definitely be a Ram Promaster or the old school serial killer, like a GMC Vandura or a G20. And let's see what else we got. What did you do before van life? So a lot of people want to know this. I was a licensed tankerman, which means I had a, 
a red book that looks like a passport. It's called an MMC, Merchant Mariner's Credential. And I was licensed to transfer different clean chemicals and um, like crude oils from barges to docks and docks to barges. But more specifically, I was a short tankerman, which is basically like there's two kind of tankermen. You got tankermen that work on the towboats and you got tankermen that work on land. So the land, the land tankermen are kind of like MLB version of tankermen, you know, like in forms of like a boat tankerman would be high school baseball, short tankerman would be like MLB. So in my opinion, if you're going to any van life meetups this year. Uh, matter of fact, I'm glad I'm glad that question popped up because it reminds me. I feel like I saw a comment somewhere on my YouTube or Instagram or somewhere, and somebody was asking me about a meetup that was coming. And I'm not. I think it was in North Carolina. Now, I forgot the name. I think it started with a B. So anyway, I'm gonna look into that. However, van life meetups, I am into it. I don't know about them, so that's my only drawback. But if I find out about them and I happen to be around or we can pull it, I will be at some. Uh, Miss Emma and Bus Bus. Uh, what kind of animal do you think you are most similar to? Does your truck have a name slash personality? Now I gotta admit, <laughs> this is the this is the most interesting question on here because I don't know how to answer it. Okay, what kind of animal do you think you are most similar to? Well, with the van life, I probably say a sloth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, I don't know. Let me see what my personality would be. I feel like man i don't know <laughs> i don't know a bird i don't know <laughs> that's so tough Emma. i'm sorry i want to give you a better answer does your truck have a name or personality no <laughs> i'm sorry to sell you so short but i tell you what not that i couldn't answer any of those properly i'll work on it just for you uh how do you define success honestly i don't even know uh just success what's successful to me at this point in my life man just being happy being around people you love and loving people you're around and that's about it honey. that's all you got to do and you know selflessness i think that's success in a man or in a person will you come to north carolina so i can sign your truck man anybody's welcome to sign the truck man just let me know when i'm over there and we can work it out you know what i'm saying all right uh, please make long videos i love long videos i really been working on that i did comment back to that uh, what does your family think about you living truck life and as a nomad? I don't have the best relationship with my mom. Not that I wouldn't want it. Uh, but I don't, you know, I think they're kind of indifferent about it. My dad, uh, my biological father, I mean, he thinks it's cool. My dad's always supportive, but we both, we're both on our own little journey right now to improve ourselves. So we're both doing it in our own way. So it's really beautiful in that term. Um, but other than that, I mean, and they don't care you know what i'm saying I, I just i think everybody knows i'm gonna do whatever i decide to do with that time in my life and they just kind of accept that i do weird stuff to them if you had to choose a destination to fly to where would you go and what would you do while you're there uh bali indonesia is my number one out of country travel spot as of right now and has been for a very long time so i would go there what i would do i don't know i don't like the plan it's less fun favorite state you've visited so far and why all right, so it's not really fair to ask me right now because I haven't been a lot of places, but I definitely had to say Arkansas just because Arkansas is so underratedly beautiful. And I don't know, like I said, I haven't been to other states to really compare. So when I think of regions I've been to, I say the desert, the, the Southwest desert, um, regular Southern country, Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi type country. Uh, so I mean, you know, Arkansas is easily like different and personally i mean i don't really care about the desert too much i spent a lot of time in the desert when i was in the army so i mean there's something about the desert you know it's not that i it's not that it's a problem it's just i'm kind of indifferent about the desert uh let's see cynthia also where did you learn to cook my boyfriend loves cooking as well you got to put out your best dish recipes uh as far as cooking goes honestly i mean i don't know we live in a technological time so a lot of the new stuff i cook I just look up online or try to get some guidance on and I don't know uh, Cajun food I just grew up in Louisiana so honestly I don't know what's the average weekly cost you spend on gasoline because I know a lot of people want to know what things cost but I'll, I'll probably end up doing a separate video for breakdowns average cost on gasoline a week is really depending on where I'm going what I'm doing but uh yeah i don't know it's so subjective you know like this depends on where i'm going what i'm doing i tell you this though 
I don't spend any more than I can afford. <laughs> so I mean, but it just varies. I mean, sometimes I just be chilling and won't be spending like hardly any money on gas. And sometimes I'll be driving. Like yesterday when I was driving, looking for the spot I was heading to, but two of them, I couldn't find two spots. So I wasted gas. Now I'm over here and this is on a different side of town. And I'm, I'm pretty much low on gas. So I'll just be hanging out here until it's time to go donate plasma. Um, do you know you have a Cajun Louisiana accent? And do you also know how amazing your accent is? Okay, look, I don't feel like my Cajun accent is even existent anymore, but apparently it is because I get a lot of comments on it. But that's because I left Louisiana and I moved to Houston and I was there for like three and a half years. So I kind of transitioned to this weird Southern, like Louisiana, Houston blend. But in Houston, I sound to Louisiana. In Louisiana, I don't sound like Louisiana no more. So, um, will you ever come to Virginia? Girl, of course. What's your favorite Cajun dish to cook? Man, I don't know. Anything with smothered meat, honestly. Don't even matter. Does your guitar have a name? Look, man, I suck at guitar so bad, I wouldn't ever name the guitar. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't play for real. I suck at that. How old are you, and what's your favorite food? By the way, my sister and I love your videos so far. I hope you blow up one day, and uh, you have great energy, bro. Man, that's so sweet. I ain't lying. I love seeing comments like that. <coughs> Let me keep it positive. Well, I'm 24. My birthday's in September, September 6th. I'm a Virgo for anybody that cares about Zodiacs. And my favorite food, probably, uh, I don't know, seafood, crawfish, shrimp, boiled, both of them. Um, yeah, I probably, yeah. I probably stick with that. When did you first start experiencing DPDR and what has helped you cope with it? October 2022, around like the 21st-ish, roughly. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, help you cope with it? Man, honestly, I don't know. I, honestly, I just do not know. I try to take stress out of my life. And, I don't know. I try to do things that make me happy. And, I mean, it's still a struggle every day. So, I don't know, bro. I'm working on it. I still, I'm working on it today. I'm working on it yesterday. I'm, I'll be working on it tomorrow. I just try to let myself, I just try to remind myself that like, you know, everybody's got their own thing going on, you know, just because you've got your particular situation going on and other people don't share that exact like experience. Other people have other things going on. So I think I find comfort in knowing that we're all struggling with something. What are some things you would like to have in your build that you just don't have the room for? Uh, come to Bama. You seem cool. I would love to sign your truck. Keep posting. I love your personality. Thank you, girl but an oven i would say an oven but i'm actually working on getting a little coleman oven right now a little portable one so that's not gonna be that big of a deal um uh, what else i would like to stand up you know or some something to that effect but i don't even know if i build the back out if i'll be able to achieve that i mean technically i guess you could do anything but what else i don't know man um uh, a better place oh a bigger kitchen probably but i use a tailgate i don't know uh, all the stuff I'm missing, I kind of compensate for somewhere. Probably a better kitchen. Better kitchen setup, like have some, some counter space. <clears throat> I will probably have to be adding a, some kind of ventilation system, like a fan. Like I cut a hole in my roof or something during the summer. Maybe not this summer, because I don't know how, how we could be looking on, I guess, uh, funds at the time. But I think I'm going to make that a goal. But yeah, no, I really don't know. That's a couple things, though. You come back to Houston at some point, uh, I'll be back for sure. Yeah, I'll definitely be back. Just don't know when. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Create an Amazon wish list of items you need or have bought on Amazon. I got you, girls. In the links. I made the Amazon. I love the social experiment video you done on living homeless for 24 hours. Ah, oh, that was one of my OG videos. That was back in 2021 when I uh, started doing YouTube. You know, I was planning on making it big then, but... Uh, <laughs> I ended up having to go back to the boats at the time. So I circle back around to the YouTube when we're here now. But on that, I will, I do want to do a longer homeless social experiment video and kind of like a, a better version, you know, like a not so rookie version. So I might save that idea for later down the line when I do like, I don't know, like a three to five day or even like a week long homeless video. Just find somewhere to park the truck, park the crib, and then go be homeless again somewhere. Let's see. How long are you planning on doing van slash truck life? And is there anything or goal that you would be striving to achieve as a YouTuber? 
Oh, uh, I mean, as a YouTuber, I don't exactly know how long I'll be living in my truck. I do know I enjoy the lifestyle. However, uh, I don't know. I wanted to be a different kind of content creator, a different kind of YouTuber. I don't necessarily want to be a van lifer forever. I'll probably go back to doing like 2021 solid content, like pranks and uh, things that are more interactive with people. But for now, with this mental stuff I got going on, this works out for me and it's kind of, it's cool. Let's see, goals as far as a YouTuber. Um, I don't know, link back up with my boy Chino. We did the pizza video together. That's like my little brother. He just turned 18, so I don't know. I would love to do, like, I don't know, just get the game together and go shoot some more videos. It's, it's just fun and interactive. But for now, I want to hit all 50 states. I want to do some traveling while I'm on this little quest or chapter of my life. Just get the traveling done and kind of see the world and just kind of, like, widen my... Um, my knowledge on people uh, are you dating right now well I like to say I'm not dating right now but I'm also not really looking and I'm on a different kind of journey right now somebody asked me on Instagram they like man do you get a uh, like do you get females on the road I'm like I'm not living like this because <laughs> you know what I'm saying man I'm enjoying my life right now man I don't know I've also got to do some work on myself before I'm ready for a relationship but nah, not dating not looking I just kind of want friends you know, I just want cool, genuine, down-to-earth people. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so I think I'm going to wrap it up with this one. This person, uh, let's see, as if you care, said, okay, I see someone else asked the favorite food question, so I'll ask, why do you run out of gas? Doesn't your gas gauge work? <laughs> All right, look, I like to push the limit, okay? I'm, <laughs> I've got a very bad habit of that. But I will say, the times I ran out of gas, uh, I knew I was low. And I went to go, I was on my way to get gas as I ran out of gas. But like, I don't know. Really, I just pushed the limit. I don't get gas till it's too late, apparently. But I've been trying to better that, okay? So just be patient with me. I need more. Y'all want more in the future? I'll probably do a part two. Because, you know, as time goes on and we kind of all get acquainted here. And y'all get to know me more. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go more in depth on certain questions. And I'm sure new questions will arise along the way. So, I think I might cut it here just because the question is going to be a long portion of this video. And I already know, y'all know what I'm about to say. So, y'all might as well say it along with me. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching. I love you. If you're new, welcome to the family. This Big Nugget, and I'm out. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. Hanging pictures on my wall. Every Saturday, rapper Mr. Magic Money Man.